Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel where we talk about skincare, grooming, and sometimes hair, so that sounds like your thing. Make sure you are subscribed. What was that? Also, come and follow me on Instagram where I post a lot of stuff you're not gonna see here on YouTube. My shirt is so like loud, like physically very loud, so I'm really sorry if you hear rustling. Today, we are finally gonna be talking about Crave's latest release, the Oh So Simple Water Cream. I'm warning you now, this is going to be a long video. I have about four pages worth of notes I feel like I'm glad I waited to use this product because usually when it comes to moisturizers You know a lot of people like to test their products for four weeks when it comes to moisturizers You kind of get immediate effects and you kind of know within like a week how your skin's reacting to it in general But it was good to kind of see everybody's reviews um, Both on YouTube on Instagram the questions that you had for me about it because I posted when I got it So a lot of questions came through a lot of concerns came through on Instagram as well So I want to address all those today, but I just want to make it clear please bear in mind that a lot of the to topics I'm going to talk about today um, is my opinion and um, what I look for as a consumer when it comes to purchasing my skincare. I'm a little bit more of an average consumer. I'm like an obsessive skincare consumer. So everything I'm about to talk about is not how you should approach the topics I'm gonna talk about. It's clearly my opinion when it comes to these certain topics. It will make sense. Oh, I didn't even show you it. Here we go, the Oh So Simple Watery Cream. This is gifted. Crave did send this out to me, um, which I'm very thankful for because I usually have to spend so much money getting my friend to ship over from America. So the first initial things I want to address is the packaging, not from a graphic design point of view. Price and the ingredients. These are some of the main concerns that people had about this product. Right, let's just get into the packaging. So we kind of know the story of the um, Oat So Simple water cream packaging. Crave and Leah Yu in general are so transparent um, when it comes to what they're doing within the company. They're always updating us with what's going on from a business perspective over on their Instagram. Instagram, as well as the usual, you know, like nice marketing, uh, creative content that you expect from a brand. They are probably one of the, the most transparent brands that I've, I've ever seen. We know this moisturizer has been a long time coming because Lee has been so open about the formulation process, the pros and cons. And more recently, if they're struggling to please everyone with more ethical, sustainable packaging, they let us know. We have known the whole process of landing on this packaging for this product because they've been so transparent about it. And one of the main things they were talking about was trying to make packaging that was um, a lot more recyclable, a lot more sustainable, like eco-friendly. And a lot of people were upset that it ended up being just a plastic tub rather than a glass jar. But here's the thing. I've really wanted to do a video about sustainable packaging, sustainable brands, but there's so much more to sustainability and sustainable packaging than what you can or can cannot put in your recycling bin at home. It's way more complicated than that. There's just so many factors to consider from carbon footprint being one of the main concerns when it comes to shipping glass. And I'm talking about glass jars because everyone seemed to be like, this should have come in a glass jar. Glass is of course heavier than plastic, which of course increases shipping costs. It uses more oil, it uses more fuel, but saying that, you know, plastic is literally made from oil. So <laughs> it depends. There's, there's just so many different factors. There was a recent kind of like study I, 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 I hate saying that. Um, it was an independent study, but I don't know how reliable it is. But they compared the plastic container and a glass jar from the same brand, it was a baby food brand, and they found that the glass jars actually produce a third to a quarter more greenhouse gases than the plastic ones. The plastic ones release fewer carcinogenics into the air, sent fewer pollutants into waterways. But you know, despite things like this, there are pros and cons to using both glass and plastic. And I'm of course not sitting here saying, get plastic is better than glass. You know, that, that, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is taking into consideration what, what this pot is for, no matter what it's made out of, this happened to be the best option, the more ethical option, the more sustainable option for this particular product, for this particular brand at this particular time. Crave have been very, very open and honest um, saying that, you know, yeah, we're using a plastic tub. If more sustainable options um, appear in the future, they'll immediately change over. Over, they are constantly, constantly looking um, for better options, not just with this product, but with everything. You know, from packaging to their shipping, all over as a company. 
company. And there is a recent job posting on the Crave website that they're looking for a sustainability specialist. And that's the thing, I, what I really appreciate is you have to remember Crave are an indie brand technically. They're a small brand and they're doing the best they can and they're being so transparent about it. Like they're literally telling us their journey, which is a lot more than these bigger brands are doing, which I guarantee most of us still buy from. But look, if you really have an issue with packaging, plastic packaging, don't buy the product. Not this one in particular, but in general. If you really want to take a stance, do not buy the product. Lush do some um, packaging free products. They're not great, but if that's your stance, there are package free options out there, but we can't keep buying products with difficult to recycle packaging and then be like, why aren't these brands doing anything? We're part of the problem too. It's unrealistic to stop using cosmetics in packaging altogether, but it's also unrealistic to expect any brand to suddenly have the answer to the most sustainable packaging, um, eco-friendly packaging, easy to recycle packaging, better shipping choices. We can't expect them to have the answer immediately. But what I love is Crave is telling us exactly how they're doing it and that is their future goal. Okay, that was a bit of a rant. <laughs> but let's take a look at the price. The Oh So Simple Water Cream is $28 for, how, how much is this? <laughs> how much is this? 80 mil, 2.7, FL, what's that, fluid ounces? Um, which I think is actually a really good price. But now imagine if this was in a glass jar. <laughs> how much more that would cost as well. You have to take into account the packaging as well. A glass jar would have put the price up of this. The extra money that would go into produce those jars, the extra money we'd have to pay for the shipping of those jars. And that's another thing as well. A lot of people like $28 for a basic moisturizer. Another thing you have to consider when it comes to why you're buying products, you aren't just paying for the packaging and the product inside. You have to take into account everything you're paying for, especially when it comes to a smaller independent brand. You pay for things like the rent of the offices, marketing costs, shipping and supply companies, paying the staff, licensing fees, graphic designers, the formulators. And then of course you have to put a markup on that price as well to make a profit. And yes, you can get basic moisturizers for five pounds, but that's usually because they're a bigger brand from a big conglomerate company. They have the money to do that. So that's a decision you have to make as well. Are you wanting to support the smaller brand, a small independent brand like Crave Beauty, their creators, their ethos, their ethics by spending a little bit more is 100% up to you. That's the thing you don't have to. If you want a good basic moisturizer, go get CeraVe for a couple of quid or however much it is. It's completely up to you. But I also don't think this is overpriced. As I mentioned, I think $28 for this amount is good. But then also you have to think about the actual formulation of the product. I've had to refilm this video because Leah actually posted an interview with the, um, the formulator of this product. And you're getting a formulator who's worked for like Laneige before. He's worked for big, big companies, big brands, making some iconic products. I think Leah has said this actually before, and I feel like this is a good example of paying good money for a good formulator. Let's say you give me a man who can barely cook an oven pizza properly, um, the full ingredients for a Victoria sponge cake. You also have Gordon Ramsay who has the exact same ingredients. We're both using the same tools in the same kitchen, cooking the cake for the same amount of time. Whose cake is gonna come out better? Obviously Gordon Ramsay, because he's got the experience behind him. He's been working with ingredients for years. He's been making Victoria sponges for years. I don't know what, what I'm doing. I could do the exact same things as Gordon Ramsay's doing and my cake could come out upside down, curdled with a whole egg in it. And you would pay more for his cake over mine. Swap the word cake for moisturizer and we have an example of why me personally would buy um, a product that's been formulated by somebody with a lot more experience. Personal opinion. Also, um, oats being the last ingredients, I'm just going to quickly touch on this. Crave actually address this in an Instagram post. Oats, the star ingredient, is basically the last ingredient um, on the ingredient list. But looking at one of their Instagram posts, they address this. Um, they say, you may be wondering why Avena Sativia, aka Oats, is far down on the Oats of Simple Water Cream ingredient list. Rest assured, our water cream is made up of 79.8% oat extract. The reason water is listed higher up and the oat is further down is because in the United States, water and oat must be listed as separate ingredients. The oat extract we use is water based and this is why oats may be last but definitely not least. So there we go. Also I don't know if this is a thing but it's 10 ingredients so even if it was at the last on the list isn't it like that there still might be a lot in there I don't know. Okay so let's get into my actual review of this product. When I first saw the name of this product I did have to laugh because um, Oat So Simple is a really really popular um, porridge brand here in the UK. 
Quaker Oats, Oats So Simple. Um, so I did laugh, but the name is cute and it fits with all their other kind of like, um, the little puns, it's cute. Packaging is everything you would expect from Crave, simple, but informative. I always keep the packaging because it looks so good. And this one actually comes with a spatula, so I need to clean it, there's moisturizer in it. But I like these kind of like um, better design spatulas because you know you usually get those little plastic ones. Um, you tend to lose them or throw them away instantly. So from a recyclable standpoint as well, having like a specially made spatula um, kind of makes you want to keep it and look after it rather than throw it in the bin after. So the ingredients, you've got your normal humectants and emollients in there. And just to say it is a very basic looking moisturizer when you look at the ingredients. So yeah, emollients, humectants, uh, moisture and hydration. You've got squalene, a hydrogenated version of squalene. <laughs> I feel like I may have mixed those two up, but that's produced naturally from our sebaceous glands. But squalane is the more cosmetic friendly version I believe, so it's a bit more like sitting on the shelf friendly. But yeah, that helps with our skin barrier, keeping our skin nicely moisturised. And some viscosity controlling stuff in there as well. So yeah, very, very simple. And then of course you have oats. These help soothe the skin and help maintain that skin barrier and keep it moisturised. I had oats in skincare before, but I didn't really know of their benefits or really think it was anything. Um, but then Leah talked about it so much. I was like, oh, okay, it might be interesting to see what the actual benefits are. So I think Oats in a moisturizer fits the brand perfectly as well. Very, very basic in a good way. But I was a bit like, when initially looking at the ingredients, I was like, what is gonna make this moisturizer stand out to me above my other? moisturizers other than the addition of oats. Then I looked at the other Crave products on my shelf and I was like, the formulation, that's what's gonna make me love it. I already know I love the other products from Crave. They're simple, they do what they're supposed to do. And that's exactly what I wanted to expect from Oats So Simple Water Cream. So as I mentioned, this was gifted. I was really happy when they got in touch because I was literally about to contact my friend and say like, let me know how much the packaging is going to be to send over to the UK. And I just have to let you know that just because something is gifted, it doesn't mean you have to give it a good review. There's a difference between sponsored and gifted. Sponsored content is something you signed a contract for and they're giving you money for. Gifted means a brand has sent you a product with no obligation to review it and no obligation to give it a positive review. So this is my honest opinions. When I first used this, I absolutely loved it. I have oily skin. This went on super light. It went on, mm, how do I explain this? So <laughs> there's a lot of water creams, like a lot of these hydro creams, and they're kind of, um, I, I feel personally that they're made for more oily skin types. And when you put them on, they kind of sink in and they're kind of gone, they, they sink in well, but they don't really give you many um, moisturizing benefits. It's more about hydration. I always feel like I have to follow up with a more like occlusive moisturizer. This had a much different kind of feel to it. It did feel a little bit thicker while still being lightweight, but still moisturizing. Didn't leave me greasy and gave me a nice glow, which I feel is something that a lot of cream moisturizers, cream gels miss is that nice, hydrated, plump looking glow. And it almost does have that kind of layer up feel to it. The first time, um, the morning I got this, I obviously used it straight away. I feel like I didn't use enough. I think the texture kind of fooled me because I thought all oh, this looks really rich. Um, so I didn't use enough. So that evening before going to bed, I just piled it on a little bit more and it, it was more than enough. But then my skin started to do its usual, oh, it's winter time now, you're gonna become dehydrated and oily. So here's where things get a bit odd. I stopped using Oat Simple in favor of what I believe was a thicker moisturizer, more inclusive moisturizer. I started using the Cosrx Hydrium Moisture, the powerful moisture power enriched cream I started to use. I, I don't know why it felt thicker and I thought it'd be able to trap more um, hydration and lock in moisture a bit more. And I was using my usual hyaluronic acid, but I'd wake up with very tight feeling, dry to the touch skin every time. I was like, why Why is this not doing anything? And I'm so used to waking up with like supple skin. <laughs> so I switched my routine back to using Oat So Simple as my final moisturizer. And after a few days, I have to say I was waking up still with dryish skin, but my skin didn't have that tight feeling that I did have with the COSRX moisturizer. It seemed to be able to lock in that hydration a lot better than the COSRX one. My skin did feel, it didn't feel rough, but it didn't feel like um, smooth and 
a little, always a little bit oily like it usually does in the mornings. But I did feel like this was doing a good job at locking in that hydration. But then my rosacea started to flare up. So I was diagnosed with my mild rosacea this year. And it's been laying pretty dormant for like quite a few years. So I'm, I'm still a bit scared when it comes to using products because I don't know what's going to flare up, what isn't. I'm still kind of like testing what food flares it up and what doesn't. So I don't really know how to deal with the sensitivity of my rosacea. So oh, so simple for me it was an obvious choice because of how basic it is, how safe they claimed it was for all skin types as well. For me, it was just an obvious and safe option to use whilst I was trying to discover what other products I could use alongside it. It just doesn't irritate my skin whatsoever. In fact, a, a, like a winning combination I have for my rosacea at the moment is this, um, Great Barrier Relief and Paula's Choice Azelaic Acid has been working wonders for the redness. Um, GBR has been working great for the irritation as well. So I'm sticking with this combination. It's only been like a week, but the redness is going down a lot, like a lot, a lot. So the Oops So Simple Water Cream has actually seen me through kind of like three different skin types within the space of a few weeks. It has been beneficial for my skin in all of those states. I'm really looking forward to summer and no, I'm not looking forward to summer, but I'm looking forward to seeing how this reacts with my skin in summer. But yeah, for my oily skin, then oily dehydrated skin, then my oily dehydrated rosacea prone skin, it's, it's been really good. It's been a really safe option. I can, however, see how this might not be enough for people with drier skin. Like it's just enough for me and I've got oily skin. You may need something richer if you have drier skin. In fact, you 100% will need something richer for drier skin. The interview Leah posted with the formulator of this product, they said you need something more occlusive if you have dry skin. So they recommend mixing in with your favorite oil in your evening routine. So yeah, but I, I, I feel like on its own, it may not be enough. But I've tried so many moisturizers that have basic ingredients in. CeraVe being one of the main ones, the ordinary natural moisturizing factors. Let's not even talk about that one. It's horrific. And they've all kind of been along that line of like, why do minimal ingredient moisturizers have to feel either heavy on the skin or peel on the skin or have that horrible like plasticky smell to them. That's what I feel like basic moisturizers are. And the Oaks of Simple Water Cream is a nice refreshing change that I personally feel. The only con I will say about this is if you are on the drier side, I do feel like you'll be using this up twice as quickly as you would do as someone like me with oily skin. I feel like you have to be layering this up a fair bit, especially on those drier patches. I do think like maybe this would have been like a good summer release, you know, because of how nice it does feel for oily skin and how light it is. Summer is another month I get very dehydrated again for some reason. So yeah, I will be using this a lot, like a lot, a lot. But yeah, no surprise, it's a positive review for Crave from me. I just love the brand. I was a little bit worried I wasn't gonna like this product, I must say. With, with Crave, I feel like you know if I didn't like one of their products, I, I don't think I'd review it, if that makes sense. Usually with other brands, I'm more than happy just to say, oh, I don't like this product, I won't use it. With Crave, if they ever do release something I won't like, if I don't like it, you won't see it on my channel. Just because I, I do feel like it's such a good brand and I like their ethos and I think Leah is so inspirational as well. But yeah, I just think it's a good release. I think it's a doing the job of a basic moisturizer and like all their other products, it just does its job. Oh, and I also forgot to say that they have like a little recycling guide on the inside as well. Worth the money. If I, if I paid for it, <laughs> it would be worth the money. I hope you enjoyed that. Sorry it was long. I hope it was informative. Um, um, but if you tried it, let me know your opinions in the comments down below. But that's it from me now, guys. I will see you next time.